Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the burning grass of F1 podcasts. Is that what that smell is? Sorry, sorry. Why does it smell like burning grass? I was having burning grass for dinner. <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the slow speed comical shunt of F1 podcasts. One minute you're minding your own business, the next minute Daniel Ricardo's thrusting at you from behind. No, Lance Stroll's done... Oh, I've done it all wrong. Oh, you <laughs> oh, This is like Formula One. Done a stroll. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the F1 podcast beloved by everyone on TikTok. We went fungal. No, I've got, I've got some cream. Viral. <laughs> Put some burning grass on it, it'll go away. <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake. Fuck that guy. Which guy? The guy on TikTok? No, Stroll. Daniel Ricciardo apparently said, fuck that guy. He did. Stroll, which now means... That Daniel Ricardo is my favourite driver again. Yeah, yeah. We need, <laughs> we need very fickle. We need a new TikTok. <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's sake. We remember when they last changed the point system. Was it that long ago? Because I, it's now long ago enough that I'm like, I, it, that it wasn't that long ago, but it was quite long ago, and maybe it's longer ago than I think it is. It was Schumacher, wasn't it? No, oh, he did it, did he? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I knew he was powerful in F1 at the time, but I didn't know he could. No, we are changing some yeah, points. Yeah, he said it's now. 25 points for anyone called Schumacher, which is why <laughs> Him Ralph, Ralph did Mick quite and well, yeah. jo- uh, That's why Mick <laughs> Schumacher thought he had a chance. Yeah, yeah. But now it's the Verstappens get all the points. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Ollie Peart, and tonight, from a burning grassy field covered in bits of Daniel Ricciardo's shattered rear end, gross, we look back on the Chinese Grand Prix. It was the first for five years, the first sprint of the season, and the first track to spontaneously combust. But some traditions remained. Max Verstappen won with ease, and there was the usual mix of calamity and hilarity. We'll discuss all that and decide whether we're pleased to see the race return or not. That's all to come. Joining me is a man who is packing his life away. It's Phil Tremans. Hello. Oh. Yes, I don't know, are those on YouTube probably can't see behind me because i've artfully cropped my shot but basically the room i'm in and my bathroom i'm having to take everything apart because it's all getting redecorated and it turns oh, is this out the leak you had yeah that like finally the insurance is getting sorted and ne- this oh, coming week good. possibly as you listen to this there mm. will be men tearing our bathroom apart and then shortly afterwards re-carpeting the room i'm in now so but it requires do- taking everything out of the room it turns mm. out i've got a lot of shit yeah so you're not doing it yourself Fuck that. I mean, if I had the time, I would love to do it because I think I'd learn loads and it'd be a lot cheaper. But reality, in reality, no, I haven't got the time. A DIY is, is bullshit. Just, I love it. it. I love no. it too. But I, I have kids and a job. and I, No, no, no. I you love it for the it. first. You love it when you go and buy some tools and wood and whatever you need and then take it all home and then you get it. Then you've got to unpack it and then you've got to start putting the fucking thing together. And then you realise it's going to take you six months to do something. Put, where you've got to call someone up and they can do it in 10 minutes. I put a whole kitchen together. We know. We year. talked about it on the, uh, on the podcast. Did you yeah. put it together badly? The Williams podcast. Really oh, the Williams kitchen. Really badly. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing you pay someone they do it properly turns out my walls aren't straight which is that's <laughs> very <laughs> common even at my house is relatively new we i tried to put a, 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 a build an office in the wardrobe uh <laughs> what? <laughs> where's phil oh he's working in narnia again this week <laughs> you jest room but, cupboard. so during lockdown when we all had to work from home we've only got one spare room which i'm in and this is where i've been working for a while so we took part half of our um built-in wardrobe and i converted it into an office for my wife so you open the doors and it's like a desk and it's actually got a little narnia sticker in it so but yeah when i opened when i tried to do that i realized the walls weren't bloody straight and this is a very phil puts house. his wife in the wardrobe yeah, yeah. <laughs> he gets the spare but she room. can't stay in the kitchen the whole time <gasps> oh. no i didn't oh. no phil we're gonna go we've viral already, on tiktok again we've already had people on tiktok moaning that it's just another three men with a podcast and asking us to bring chica back and have women on the podcast yeah. and now you've made a joke like that yeah that's disgusting we did have women yeah. on the podcast but they didn't want to stay I wonder why. <laughs> she's trying to get put them in the fucking wardrobe. She's, she's had too much cooking she, to do. She's very happy. <laughs> it's a very nice desk. All right. You, you misogynist. <clears throat> you pig. <laughs> Bigot. And beside him, right. some... <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd just, I'll just There's list them off for safety's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Daniel Ricardo. Come on. And beside him is a man whose mum's on fire. It's Terry Saunders. Oh, oh dear. So my mum went on holiday. I don't have to talk about my family. I talk about my dad a lot, not my mum. My, my entire family on my mum's side went on holiday, all four of them, to the Dominican Republic wow. this week. 
Very nice. That's a serious right. holiday. It's Ooh. my aunt's birthday. My auntie's 70th birthday. Ah. And so they took off. My mum took off on the flight, you know, last, maybe it's Friday. She was like, I was 10 hour flight. I'll let you know when I land. And it was maybe like, I don't know, two in the afternoon, Berlin time. So I'll oh, well, have a nice flight. Let me know when you land. And then she texted about two hours later. And I was like, well, that's odd. I didn't think, you know, Wi Fi on the plane. And I was like, what's up? And she went, oh, we've had to come back. <laughs> I was like, what? She's like, oh, yeah, the, um, the engine was on fire. Uh, that old chestnut. And I was like, what? And, she, and the thing is, what was amazing was she was very calm about it. She was just like, oh, yeah, we could see the smoke coming out of the engine. And the captain said, we're going to have to land in Manchester. We took off in Bristol. We're going to have to land in Manchester. And I was just quite amazed because I think I'd have been freaking out and swearing to never get on yeah. a plane again if I had an engine on fire that you could see from the window mm. but they just got another plane and now they're in they're on holiday and it's raining apparently well, I'm glad they're okay I mean I have yeah. been in that situation as well I, I, I was involved in what at the time was Emirates most serious incident <gasps> what was um, it? I was going to China topically um, oh. and the plane caught fire somewhere over the, the stands and we had to land in Urumqi um, and it turned out oh. some lithium-ion batteries had exploded in the hold, um, oh, and I was God. stuck there for 24 hours. And I, I wouldn't recommend it. Not not a great place. Not they didn't nice. put you up in a hotel. They did. Oh. If you could describe it as a hotel. Oh, I see. One of the worst hotels I've ever stayed in. But again, like the staff are all so good on the planes that you kind of they kind of play it down. It's only afterwards that you think that seemed like it was probably a bit hairy. But at the time, they're like, "Oh, it's all right. We're just going to do, just going to land and put the fire out, and it will all be fine." Going to land on fire. It's Those, fine. Uh, it's cabin Would you crew, like a biscuit? They, they should get medals, shouldn't they, cabin crew? <laughs> they should. They all kinds of shit. Ollie, you ever been on fire or been in a hotel? <laughs> I've been in a hotel. Oh, I'll get you. Um, but apart from that, no. Um, what have you been up to? What you've been doing? Hey, I've been getting into my lawn trimming. Oh, this brought to you by Manscaped. Yeah, the the edges of lawns. I I find um I've got the the like the second tier thingies. Which yeah, exactly. The, I what, love edging. <laughs> that's something very different. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Oh, you sweet summer child. <laughs> <laughs> I also use a machine that you plug into the mates to help me as well. <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to Google edging. Uh-oh. No, I'll, no, I'll wait. I'll wait <laughs> no, 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 please, please do. Shall please I? do, because uh, I love watching you nearly get to the results that they're not quite as real as it is. <laughs> edging. Edging involves cycles of increasing... Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, stop, we'll, stop, we'll stop that. I'm, I'm edging right now. <laughs> I'm edging away from you to, towards the door. <laughs> News! Fernando Alonso has poured cold water on the fires of the silly season by signing a new contract with Aston Martin that will keep him there until he dies of old age. Despite talking to other teams, Alonso clearly figured out he wasn't going to get very far and figured being in a well-funded works team that's going forward is probably better than being in one that's going backwards. One that won't ever sign him or one that doesn't exist yet and will be shit for years. It does, however, mean that we'll be back driving a Honda engine in 2026, which could be fun. <laughs> Yes, yes. So, what what do we know about Honda? Obviously, we know a lot about Honda, but what? Like, like, well, this is this is when they're coming back into F one again, having previously been in F one and then left, and then come back and then left, and then been in left. Because I, I, you know, I genuinely forgotten about all of this. Because when I read the headline about him driving for Honda again, I was like, what? Oh no, yeah, forgot. yeah, yeah. Because so, they'll be Aston Martin's engine supplier from twenty twenty six. But what I don't get, because. Red Bull hired a bunch of the Honda people when Honda stopped making engines. Yes. So now the Red Bull engine company is a lot of ex Honda. Which people. is what they should be called. The Red Bull Engine mean? Company. <laughs> the Red Bull <laughs> Engine Company, that's better. Which Horner means and that Honda. <laughs> but Honda, therefore, aren't all the people that are making the current Honda engine. It's kind of like. It's kind of like going back to Neighbours after a few years and all the actors are different. Yes. It's kind of the same, but it's not. Yes. So i got a feeling they're going to be terrible. Yeah. I think they're still going to have Lassiter's at Honda and they're still going to have Paul. Um, <laughs> Is he like GP, Tony? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Stefan GP. <laughs> oh, it's all coming together. Don't it make you feel good? <laughs> Don't it make you feel good? <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to be Honda in badge. But I think pretty much anyone who is any good at Honda is either... Well, maybe maybe they hang on to a few. I don't know. Maybe they're just like, we don't want to lose these guys. They're quite good. Let's not give them to Christian Horner. 
because God knows what he's going to do. Yeah, but do when Honda quit, they said they'll quit and never come back into Formula yeah, 1 Yeah, but whatever. they've said that 15 times now. <laughs> no, I know, but if, if you're working for the Formula 1 project and Honda say, we're quitting, we're never going to come back to Formula 1, and Red Bull say, I oh, will have you, you're likely to jump ship yeah, to Red Bull, aren't you? And not yeah. expecting Honda to come back 20 minutes later and go, psych! <laughs> They'll probably have kept the engineers that just love engineering, not specifically F1 engineering, they just love engineering. They're like, oh, well, I'll get some good engineering Ooh. in at Honda. <clears throat> Whereas the guys rumors. that really want to do F1 stuff, they'll probably have gone to Red Bull. I'm saying without a shred of evidence or knowledge, but that was that's what I assume would be happening. Um, but it's all going to be interesting with the relationship. Well, maybe that means that the relationship with Fernando Alonso will be okay, because the people that he pissed off when he was going on about the GP2 engine at McLaren aren't there anymore. Yeah, it's like being pissed off with having a beef with the sugar babes. <laughs> but... <laughs> no, they're different members. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, I still hate the sugar bays, but it's different people. So what happened? I, I, so, you just had to fill me in. So what did he just this? get all leggy with? Honda, I'm going to say, I, in my head, it's like two years ago, but in practice, it was probably ten. Right. It was he was driving for McLaren. The engine was quite shit, and he basically just continuously slagged off the engine, like very publicly, like came over the radio going, "This is a GP2 engine." Like literally, oh, actually, <laughs> that date, that date, because GP two has been Formula two for quite a while. Yeah. Now. So, <laughs> um, so he basically, unlike Fernando Alonso, blotted his copybook and burned a load of bridges, um, which what? is generally what he does with kind of everyone he ever works with. So now he's going to have to make nice, which will be yeah. fun, but it do, it does um, it does slightly. Put to bed all the things. Oh, will he go to Mercedes? Oh, will he go to Audi? It's like, no, he's kind of ruined all that now, which is a bit of a shame. Has he ruined all that? Or... No, I mean, there's still a bit of it going on, but he was one of the sort of the key players in like, well, where Alonso goes, we'll decide where other people go, maybe, possibly. Do you yeah, see the video that? he put out announcing it? By the way. No, couldn't be asked. <laughs> just, he just really nonchalantly sat on, a, sat on this like leather arm back chair and was like, I'm staying at a, a fucking Red Bull. Not Aston Martin. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. And it was just he made out like it was a really big fucking. Well, deal. the thing is, he recorded lots of takes of all the different teams he could be driving for. <laughs> yes, so like, just 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 put out which one I'd choose. But he Let's was wearing the, the Aston right Martin uh, colours. So, Let's hope they you know, put the. Uh, uh, he's been into Nico Hockenberg's wardrobe. He's got all the. He's he got all of them when he was super sub. He's just picking out a race suit. It was just like doing one for every single team. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know. I guess it kind of makes sense because when you look at where he was being tapped to go, he's not going to go to Red Bull because they they won't have him. I might have well, gone. He's, to, he's, he's got, might have gone to Mercedes, but but they want Antonelli long term. He would he would only be a stopgap. Yeah, and also Red Bull. I mean, Red Bull is only going to happen really if Verstappen left, which was and only even, really a viable for like twenty minutes, wasn't it? And even if he, I think Red Bull are forward thinking enough that they're like, do we really want a forty three year old driver? Even if he is really good, I think I don't. <clears throat> I think Aston Martin is probably the best that Alonso can get because Audi would oh, probably take on. him, but they're going to be shit for ages. Mercedes are on their way backwards. A- Aston Martin are generally on the up, albeit quite slowly. Do you know what? Do you know why he couldn't go to Red Bull? Because there's no secret. Because Dave- if he'd have gone to Red Bull, then David Coulthard would have come out and been like, "Oi, <laughs> I've been here the whole time." <laughs> That's not how he sounds. Hey, I've been here the whole time, the big yen. Oh, what if the Queen did a job it? I've been in Red Bull for 20 years now. Hey. Oh, dear. Um, David Coulthard there. More news. Could Red Bull finally be listening to our advice? Not by getting rid of Christian Horner, but possibly by signing Carlos Sainz to replace Sergio Perez. This seemingly obvious decision has been slightly delayed by Perez not being quite as bad as usual for a few races. But nevertheless, the industry scuttlebutt seems to suggest the outgoing Ferrari driver could be headed to Milton Keynes alongside Verstappen in 2025, unless he's tempted by a more lucrative offer from Audi. The suggestion is also that Daniel Ricciardo's continuing poor performance will see him replaced by Liam Lawson because... (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I mean, this is exactly what we said should happen. It's not happening yet. It's just, it seems to be like major media outlets who have much better sources than we do, Mm. because our sources are the major media outlets, um, are saying that this looks like it might happen now. And it just seems the most obvious thing to do. Like, why why wouldn't you do that? All of these things make sense. Yeah. Are you hating on Ricardo again, then? 
I mean, from a driver point of view, yeah, he's been rubbish. Yeah. Oh, but now he's got that new chassis. Has, has, it, has he got the new chassis or has it been destroyed chassis. by Lance Stroll? Oh, my God. Was that, his, chassis. was that his new chassis? Imagine if he was given the magical chassis that would bring everything back and he had half a race and Lance Stroll <laughs> rear-ended him. <laughs> magical chassis. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it almost, you know, Perez had a pretty good start to the season, but then Bottas had a good start to every season. Doesn't mean well, anything. I think, didn't Perez have a pretty good start He had a better start well, last year. <laughs> Yeah. In terms of results, anyway. So, and now it's Perez starting to just, just drop off a little bit where he's not second yeah. at all. And There's also rumours of Albon being going back to be Max Verstappen's teammate, which is uh, kind of viable. I, if it were me, I'd go for Sainz over Albon, I think. Well, I've read also on the internet. Uh-oh. I'm not going to pretend I have details. This was Twitter. <laughs> but... Audi are trying to get Sainz to sign now because they want him to announce him. Yeah, they're signs throwing here. signs. Yes, they're throwing. Oh, I had to, sorry, I that just was wanted great. to. That was very good. It was, was good, wasn't it? Good Can we just acknowledge it? A bit well more, done, Ollie. Well done. Yeah, well done. Thanks, guys. You're a great guy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Geschift. I think that's signature in German. Unterschrift. Um, oh, that's it. Oh, fuck, I should know these things. I always, I'm just signing my name all the fucking time. <laughs> um. Anyway, so. But Sainz doesn't want to sign straight away oh, for Audi because he wants to see a Red Bull are going to come knocking. So it's a bit of a weird waiting game. You could almost say it's a bit like edging, isn't it? It's like everyone, no one wants to kind of splurt their load. Like Alonso is just, because of his age, he is just splurted everywhere, right? He's just kind of gone, no, I can, I can wait. I'm 43. Oh, God. That's, that's, right. Right. Oh, that's like the God. fucking opposite, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, honestly, I've been wanking like a teenager lately. Oh. Um, sorry, I've been wanking a teenager lately. <laughs> Very different. Very different. <laughs> oh, sorry, no. <laughs> uh, anyway. That's really right. And for game. YouTube, you can watch us. <laughs> three middle-aged men face uh, only wanking. We got a lot of shit on TikTok for being three middle-aged men, but in fairness, when we started this podcast, we were two relatively young men and a woman. And a woman. <laughs> So yeah. it's a sign of longevity. Mm-hmm. What are we talking know. about? <laughs> I don't know. I think so. Should be... Perez? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, Science and Liam Lawson. Liam Lawson to RB. Bish bash bosh. Yeah. Everybody's happy apart from the drivers. Which, didn't which get drive. we have sort of agreed will happen halfway through the season. We think so. Roughly. Or definitely next season. Yeah. Uh, other than Daniel Ricciardo, who wants more points? Soon, everyone could get points under proposals to overhaul the current points system. What is this, Oprah? You get points. You get points. And you get points. Yeah, there's there's a meeting coming up with big wigs, F1 big oh. wigs, a commission maybe, maybe some teams. Can't remember. Um, and the the idea is they're going to propose that you now get points up to twelfth. The argument being, what uh, being in the mid- middle of the pack, you've Everyone got more to fight for. Well, yeah, because at the moment it's kind of like it's the same teams getting the points and then there's just loads of teams on no points and they're in a certain order because of how they finish in the race and it's a little bit impenetrable. And it's like, why why not just give them more points? And in fairness, it's, uh, I'm all right with it. I'm just, I, no. I don't. Why? Why not? What's wrong with it? It's all a bit spinal tap, isn't it? <laughs> Everyone it's gets like, it. Oh. <laughs> you get a maximum oh, no, 11 you... points. <laughs> yeah, it's like now you've got, oh, these two, this was worth no points last year, but now it's two points. Well, it's still the same. Oh, no, but now it's two points. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's in effect, it's still the same. You still get a number of points for finishing. The, the, more, the better you do, the more points you get, but it's just easier for, for noobs to see why okay. <coughs> right. Al, Alfa right. Romeo is, not Alfa Romeo, what they're called now, Sauber are ahead of RB. <laughs> Kick, ah, spike, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> right. Okay, for noobs, if, you, if you've only joined F1 since Drive to Survive, first of all, welcome. I don't want to be one of those gatekeeping old men that say you don't understand what it used to be like in the old days. But let me tell you what the point system was when I started watching Formula 1. You got one point points. for a win and nothing for anything else. <laughs> it was nine points for a win, six points for second place, then four points for third place, three points for 
fourth place, two points for fifth place, one point for sixth place. And that was it. But, at the, no, not that was it. At the end of the year, only the best 11 of the 16 races scores oh, they counted. Did, they did that for a bit, didn't they? Yeah, I think they So had. you had to drop some of your best. So then the, the, the four to one magazines would have these complicated bar graphs saying, oh, Adam Pross has got this many points, but he'll probably he drop this, this race, one. Yeah. He's going to have to drop this one. So actually, there's an aggregate score. Mm. And now you're like, oh, everyone gets a fucking point. Oh, fucking. Yeah. Academy schools and you can't celebrate Christmas and whatever I'll else. I'll throw you in jail about. just for saying you're English. <laughs> and now everyone gets a fucking point. It's political critics gone mad. <laughs> fucking woke F1. <laughs> I am absolutely fine with it. I don't see any downsides to it other than reactionary old bastards in orange hats. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I think everyone oh. should win. <laughs> One for the YouTube watchers there. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, what, uh, why, what, what's the downside to it? I, I, I'm I'm fully on board to slag off most of the ideas that everyone has, but this, uh, what well, I'd say, go all the way. Gave everyone points down to one point well, for twentieth, up to I don't know twenty points for winning. Whatever, work out a system. I tell you, I tell you, who would have really hated this? Uh, me, me last year. Yes, he was doing you last his, race his, probably. No, because I've, you may have noticed, listeners, that I've stopped doing the standings this year because. Several years of trying to find funny jokes that weren't suck my balls for all of the drivers who scored points. And the worst parts of the year were the drivers who hadn't scored points all year and then suddenly scored a point, so I had another <laughs> to write a joke about. <laughs> and now they don't, they just don't have points. Just give, just give them all points just for turning up. <laughs> well, I mean, you have to finish but, the race. I think that maybe that, that should be maybe that should be a thing. Like, if you don't... Because if they do, I suppose if they do all the minus way down to 20th, points. Well, I actually if don't you know don't how this will work. Because it's minus down to points. if it's down to twelfth, mm. and you crash out, don't finish the race, and let's say only ten cars finish. Oh, which when does, was the last person? It, that never fair happens. enough, that was a while ago. But if it does, what happens then? Do you still get the points? Yeah. Is it the last person to retire, or do they roll over to the next week? <laughs> <laughs> or you can gamble them for a special prize at the end, <laughs> have a five lap sprint. And you can win like a holiday to Barbados. <laughs> or you can trade them in like Nectar Points. Trade them in. Tell us how wrong we are. You can do so via social media. We're at For f one Sake on Twitter, slash X, Instagram, and on Facebook. And we're on TikTok, which you should probably know about now. And just 19 years after it started, we're on YouTube. Come and watch us, comment on our videos, and like and subscribe so we can be influencers. Or you can email us, wrong at ff1s.com. Alternatively, if you think we're right, then why not buy us a beer at the Whinging Moustache? A pub full of old boars waffling on about F1, with an old bog in the corner that also waffles on. An old bog? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> an old bog. <laughs> Amazing. Literally, that's what my eyes saw. That is what my eyes saw. Yeah. Beautiful. An old beautiful. bog. <laughs> Sorry, that is I mean, probably, in fact. Yeah, let me just do that again. With an old dog in the corner that also waffles on about when Taki Inui got hit by the safety car. That's the Whinging Moustache, a legendary drinking hole with F1 memorabilia that would make the Hard Rock Cafe say, wow, that's a lot of old shit. At least that's the vibe. In reality, it's an Apple subscription where you get ad-free versions of this podcast. So join us at the Whinging Moustache, head to Apple Podcasts and hit the subscribe button. And... There's a free seven-day trial right now. Or, if you just want to say thanks for forcing you to try and figure out what TikTok is, you can donate a one-off pint or three to us at ff1s.com forward slash pint, pint, pint. Hey you, beat us by the grass fire and we'll tell you what we thought of all the teams. And if your feet get too hot, Terry will piss on you. Red Bull... <laughs> what? <laughs> Fucking hell, Lolly. You learned about <laughs> edging five minutes ago. <laughs> I'm all about the piss now. You're into golden yeah. showers. Oh yeah, piss God. on me, Terry. Uh... <laughs> well, that's the clips for social Not media you. sorted out. <laughs> Not you. Also, just Phil. just the feet. Just <laughs> pissing on the feet. Uh, anyway. There's two fetishes oh, thought... <laughs> in one. In Germany, it's called pissfuls. <laughs> For a brief moment in the rain-soaked sprint qualifying, we thought it could be different. Max Verstappen was only fourth, and the horny Red Bull management spectre loomed once again. But then Verstappen quickly overtook everyone and won the race by a mile, and then proceeded to do the same thing on Sunday. In more expected news, Sergio Perez seems to be heading back to his slightly disappointing form, failing to get second in either race. Business as usual, then. It ended up that way, but... 
it was quite an entertaining journey, I would say. Entertaining? Yeah, sprint qualifying was fucking hilarious. Because <laughs> I didn't... Um, I know I did. It was on Friday, wasn't it? And it when it pissed it down, like, halfway through it, and just nobody could drive anymore, and everyone was getting random fast times. That was entertaining. I was like, because we said last week this was the this was the race where they haven't been for ages, so they got no data from last year's to have a basically a good setup before they even turn a wheel. They have because they had one practice session, and then they were straight into sprint qualifying, and it pissed it down. And as a result, nobody knew how to set up their car, and everyone was just kind of like relying on their wits, um, which some of them weren't very good mm. at. And it was brilliant. It was I it was good. Well, I, did, I like that. F1 drivers aren't famous for their. Work. <laughs> can we can we talk about the fire? Mm, yes, because yes. that was brilliant. Yes, I still haven't found out exactly what happened. Is it something to do with like pockets of gas or something? Wasn't it on the bottom of the car sparking onto the? What you mean? As it in, was, as, yeah, but, but that happens at every circuit. As in why it, and that, they never and they don't catch fire. Oh, I see. Why the grass was? Well, I wondered. And they and it only caught a fire in one place right. repeatedly. Well, I read that it was a peat bog. Who? A peat bog. I don't know. Aren't the these, uh, aren't aren't these oh, yeah, incredibly yeah, yeah. valuable uh, carbon storage uh, parts of the terrain? Yeah, not when you're <laughs> in a Formula One car, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for all of Formula One, say, we're trying to be carbon neutral and, you know, we're trying to we're trying to make it a more environmentally friendly sport. But here our, our <laughs> cars fire out and peat bogs sell <laughs> fire. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that planet. <laughs> I heard that it was because the circuit is basically built on old marshland. Every now and again, like bubbles of marshy gas could just go bloop, 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 and it's a bit flammable and presumably methane y or something, and the sparks just make it go woof. Doesn't sound like but the best no place to true. build a circuit, does it, really? Don't come here with your sensible logistics. It could explode at I any moment. <laughs> I was just disappointed because I saw that on the Friday and I was hoping that by Saturday there'd just be random <laughs> fires all over the track. It just looks like a gateway to hell. It'd be brilliant. Because it, it, was, it, was it was the opposite of a wet race, really. It's like, oh, I'm, it's officially a fire race. Break out the fire tyres. <laughs> <laughs> They're made of ice. Uh, yeah, it was entertaining. Um, but then, I mean, in the sprint, yeah, you know, Hamilton was winning for a bit. Everyone, nobody saw that coming. And frankly, if you watched only the Grand Prix, you'd be like, wait, Hamilton was in the sprint race? We are actually supposed we'll to be to, talking we'll get to, to him. Yeah, uh, about yeah, yeah. Him, yeah. But then, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, but then, Verstappen was only fourth, and then he just went third, second, and then he caught Hamilton. And I think by the end of the race, which was only, what, 40 minutes, he was about five minutes up the road, something ludicrous. Once he got it's out like of front, Red- he was just like, okay, bye. It's like Red Bull have got like an autopilot system. And halfway to the end of the race, he was like, all right, I'll turn it off now. <laughs> <laughs> And away he went. Yeah, I mean, it was it was entertaining. It was it was actually not it was the worst sprint race either. Although I didn't get up at four o'clock in the morning because fuck that, I watched it later and it was all right. Yeah. And then in the race, it was kind of like yeah, but yeah, Perez is 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 it's not good enough, is it? Bear in mind, Verstappen won. How long? How much did he win by? I haven't got the results. Seventeen me, minutes, was, thirty-one. It was hours. <laughs> sixteen it was a good, days. A, goodly number of seconds that he won by it would, uh, yeah and um, also like two safety cars we had he won by th- 14 seconds almost and that was yeah after the, after a safety car like not that long from the end yeah and, and he was like oh no my lead oh whatever shall i do and I, okay bye i still oh, i still i mean i don't want to say he's cheating i said this last season i just it just seems like something's up like he's so far ahead I don't like the guy, but he's really, really good. I know good. he's really, really good. But it's really, really can't good. We just do something to level it out a bit. Just what are you suggest? I what? don't know. Like he starts. Don't start advocating violence or advocate that he goes and masturbates outside a restaurant no. because that gets us into it trouble does. with the with no, the, with no, the youth. no, no. What he no, what he should do is have a bit. Look, look I'm. Look, I don't want to break my trumpet. Talk about edgy again. <laughs> but I am really good at a lot of things, and sometimes I'm in places where I'm better than other people. Like, I want to hear know, this. Don't want to say it, but carting now. <laughs> <laughs> but what I do is I make myself shitter <laughs> to not make the other people feel bad. You are very good at that. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm really good at looking quite mediocre, but actually, I'm I'm fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> What's your point? 
<laughs> That's what Max right, 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 right. Oh, right. Oh, I see. Oh, Max just randomly bragging. Yeah, I just oh, a humble a... brag. It's just a brag. It's brag. just a random brag. I feel like a good old <laughs> no, brag if now. I was... We interrupt if this I was podcast to tell you all that I'm great. <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm really good. No, if I was Max Verstappen, I'd just be there going, you know, just, just don't go quite as quick. You can still win by a lot. Do you think but... he should just be like? Driving just behind people, going, "Oh God, oh, I can't even hold onto the car. What's going on, <gasps> guys? Oh, God, what if that... oh my tires, everything." Oh, I'm just kidding, and then he drives off. Oh no, but what if that is what he's doing, and he's still twenty seconds ahead? <laughs> well, he's going, "Oh God, oh wait, there. oh I've left them all behind." I mean, you know, how long has it been now? How many races is that? He's won like twenty out of the last twenty-two oh, or something now. Yeah. I've lost track, but he. he there's nothing else to say. And really, I, is there? Yeah, and look, he's brilliant. Yep. He's amazing. He's a great driver. But I'm just saying, he's just odd, isn't it? Like, I just think, well, can't we just put him in the worst car on the grid and see what happens? I mean, I, I'm still, I'm st- I still think there should be a compulsory wild card event at the end of the year where they just take cars out of the hat. All the drivers have to take a car out of the hat. Last race of the season, so not champions. I was going to say, no points. Go, yeah. It's just like it's like the charity shield in in football. Mm. Like you have to do it, but it doesn't really mean anything. And you can get the glory if you, you know, you let, let's put, I don't know, fucking stroll and stroll and sergeant in the Red Bull and see how they get on. Yeah, it'd be entertaining. It would be. Stick for Stafford in an Alpine. Expensive. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there is that. <laughs> McLaren. Lando Norris had one of his good weekends when he only made one mistake. Admittedly, that mistake was throwing away his sprint pole position at the first corner, but still, second in the race is impressive. Oscar Piastri, meanwhile, still hasn't got the hang of the tyres. Is this the kind of Lando Norris we should be seeing every week? He's back up there. (sighs) He's starting to frustrate me a bit now. How long has he been in F1 now? It's been a while. Five years. Four years. And he's still making the kind of mistakes like he did at the start of the sprint race, (laughs) where he he, he, he messed up the start, Hamilton got on the inside... And the logical thing to do would be just like, okay, I've messed up the start. Hamilton's got the inside. I'm going to sit behind him and try and get him as soon as DRS kicks in. But he tried this, you know, banzai move around the outside of turn one on cold tyres. And it's like, uh, and unsurprisingly, he skittered off the track and lost six places. And it's like, uh, what are you doing, Lando? That, you should, you're experienced enough not to do that. Mm. And I think there's just too much of that still in his driving. He's clearly really, really good, but he's he's got to iron all this stuff out because otherwise when these chances come up and when McLaren do have a good car, he should have won that sprint, I think. Well, it's the kind of story of Norris, isn't it? Cause he, cause he wouldn't. McLaren the staff would have won it, but you know, he should have. I know, but he should have. <laughs> but it's like, you know, Norris has been there for a good few years and... In the time that he's been at McLaren, Daniel Ricciardo, of all people, has won a race, and Piastri's won a sprint race. Yeah, and Norris hasn't yeah. because he keeps making mistakes. And so, I think that yeah. Norris is definitely better than Ricciardo, and and I think that Norris at the moment is better than Piastri because Piastri still hasn't got the hang of the tires. But yeah. if he doesn't, Piastri will get the hang of the tires, and then I think Norris might be in a little bit of trouble if he doesn't start just maximising everything he's got. Okay, you haven't got the fastest car. But you've got to get everything you can out of it, and he's he's just not. Is that unfair? Well, I mean, he came second in the race, so possibly, yeah. He did, and that in the race, he was brilliant. On Sunday, absolutely nailed it. I, I don't think he did anything wrong. Mm. And if he can keep doing that, then happy days. Because then, when when Red Bull fuck up, when McLaren do have a car that suits the track, he'll be there to, you know, they the McLaren can be confident that they've got a guy that will take it as fast as it can possibly go, if not faster. Um, but. There's still just that little doubt there. I mean, Leclerc's the same, I think. I think you're right about Piastri, put, though. Um, I think he, they're quite similar. He, Piastri, I, I thought, he, towards the end of last season in particular, like he was um, he was definitely sort of... He was catching up with Norris, wasn't he? he was, and there was like... A yeah, I mean, him, he's... You know, he's going to be really, 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 really good. Yeah, he but is. But he, he, he's a year and a bit now into it, and he really needs to start understanding the tyres. And from what I could hear on Sunday, he it does seem like they're so difficult to get right, but... Mm. You know, the best drivers can do it, and he's got to learn how to well, do it. Well, you've just got to, haven't you? You've, you've just got, got to. to. Yeah. You've just got to. Yeah. It's well, like complaining about Microsoft Teams. <laughs> uh, yeah, go on. I don't know anybody that still uses Teams. I do. Oh. Do you Skype as well? No, only for therapy. <laughs> <laughs> well, as in the oh, using Skype true. is therapy. Yeah, <laughs> it's just... It's... I use... Microsoft's new AI feature. 
I'm doing very well. <laughs> yes, you are doing well. It looks like you're writing a letter. <laughs> Is it a suicide? No, no. no. <laughs> Dark. <laughs> Ferrari. Carlos Sainz's run at being Ferrari number one has been halted as the soon-to-be unemployed Spaniard was behind Charles Leclerc all weekend. Was this Sainz being worse or Leclerc being better? Yes. <laughs> <sighs> it's weird because Leclerc was fourth last time and he was fourth again this time. But Sainz was ahead of him last time, but now he's behind him. So I think Sainz, you know when you've had like minor surgery or a fall or something, and you feel better straight away because the adrenaline, but a few weeks later, it just you get a bit depressed. Everything hurts. But I think that's what's oh, happened. No. I think, like my knee from the skate park. Oh yeah. How's your knee doing? It's, ne- it's still yeah. lumpy. Nearly three and a half weeks later, but it's not. It's not quite. It's, it's much better than it was. Oh. I went skating again oh. and didn't hurt it. So you'd be fifth in this race. I you? would say you're feeling. Yeah. yeah. Just, oh, I just feel, oh, I just feel fifth. Carlos Sainz has got a lumpy knee. Is that what we're saying? He's been rollerblading. Is <laughs> yes, he's been rollerblading too much. Yeah. And he's too old. Keyhole, for it. but with a keyhole blade. Maybe you're right. I think Key. you might be onto something there. Like, was he? Do you reckon? Because if he so. came out of surgery and he was racing how soon after? He was probably still on the drugs. He's probably like feeling great. Two weeks. He's off yeah. them now. So he's probably still got stitches. Yeah. And like the adrenaline, you know? Can I? Can I always think this with Nicky Lauda when he came back? Because like the first race back, it's like, oh my god, oh my god, everyone's like, oh my god, you're amazing, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and then like three races on, he's still as burned and scarred, but everyone's bored. Like, oh, him again. <laughs> That's Old how I imagine bloody McBandages, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't look, Nicky. Every time when look when you finish in the toilet, can you just <laughs> chuck your bandages away? Oh, it's disgusting, mate. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking about that season the other day where everyone still sort of hails louder, uh, sorry, hails Hunt as a great champion for winning that season. You forget that he beat a guy who nearly died, who missed several races and retired from the last decider race of the season. I was like, I think Hunt is slightly overrated. I know it's not as gory or as glory, but it's a bit like when, uh, if, if Eddie Irvine had won that championship, when Michael Schumacher broke his leg, yeah. it would be a similar thing. It's like, oh my God, how did you beat Schumacher? Well, <laughs> I just uh, waited yeah. for him to break his leg. <laughs> yeah, I just, just waited. Uh, do, do the accent, please, Terry. <laughs> Which one? The Eddie Irvine Northern Irish accent, please. Oh, I can only do, sorry, Northern Irish, you go, no. <laughs> Michael Schumacher. Oh, no, way off. That's got Graham Norton straight away. <laughs> no, Michael Schumacher. <laughs> Why can't I do a single accent? Like, you can. That was good. What? I was like, Eddie Irvine, we got him on the podcast. It was brilliant. Eddie, great to see you. How are you doing? Would you like to buy a house? <laughs> I've been living in Scotland for a bit, have you? <laughs> Hang on. How was that accent yeah. better than my Scot? That was a better Scottish yeah, accent. That was a good Scottish accent. I mean, it wasn't, but it was notable as being a Scottish accent. Yeah, it- as opposed to the <laughs> accent you were trying to do. I've seen Eddie Irvine in his pants. Okay, well, that came out of nowhere. Get out of my house! <laughs> it was a bit like that. Why have you seen Eddie Irvine in his pants? He's, uh, he, I, used to, I used to work on a, uh, in, in chalets in uh, Courchevel, right? Years ago, as Ooh. a driver. I was a driver. I used to drive people around. And the, a chauffeur? Yeah, a chauffeur, yeah, exactly. So you're a professional driver? I was a professional. You've been hiding your light under a bushel exactly, on this podcast. Yeah, I was a professional. You drove, you drove a Ford one? No, driver. and I didn't drive him, but he was, he oh. was, he was in the <laughs> chalet story. next door to the one that I was working in on holiday, I presume. Oh. And uh, looked through the window and there he was in his pants. Wow. Yeah. True story. There you go. That is a good I've story. I've already told you about it's the time I almost ran that. over Michael Schumacher, didn't I? And... and no. Yes, I've definitely. Have you? Yes. So. Tell us again. Me I forgot. Don't remember. Anything. Have I definitely not told you that? I've definitely. I don't remember it. Tell us again. Same same season, right? This time in Merrybell, and Ferrari used to have a. a there was actually three chalets. It was like a little cluster of, sh- of chalets in Merrybell, and Schumacher used to go there all the time. I think ultimately he ended up buying them off Ferrari, which is where he had his injury. <sighs> no, no, no. You, but you, no, I didn't do this that. This is your fault. But, your job wasn't putting the rocks no, there. No, I was the driver, right? <laughs> and the GoPros. Because there was all like poncy, twatty chalets. One night we were doing dinner service and we ran out of napkins. This is absolutely true. Ran out of napkins and the boss said, you oh, need man. to go down to the chalet down the road and get some napkins. I was like, right, fine. Hopped in the car, snowing really heavily. And then I started driving down the hill very slowly. And this bloke was out walking his dogs on the road. And um, I was like, oh, shit. And then he just walks into the middle of the road. It's like quite a sort of, it's like a country lane type thing. 
Anyway, I slammed the brakes on rather than gently put them on, and I started sliding towards <laughs> this guy, and I had to swerve, and then I just missed him and his dogs and smashed into the side of a like a, a pile of snow. And the guy turned around and was like, oh, sorry. And it was Michael Schumacher. Fuck he up. made me crash, and I almost oh. hit him. So If you'd have hit him, he'd have run into your pit garage and tried to punch yeah, him. Yeah, maybe. Another little David I... Coulthard story there. <laughs> Big, I, I remember when Schumacher tried to hit me. I feel like we should reenact some of the great moments in Formula One history. Oh, great, I down. Yeah, that would be amazing. Uh, just pick drivers where the accent doesn't get too racist, <laughs> just to help me. That <laughs> great moment Prospect. where Joe Guan Yu and Kamui Kobayashi. <laughs> no, 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 he's drinking beer. Stop. Stop. Think about it. <laughs> Noreen Carter Kane, you say. <laughs> Aston Martin. Lance Stroll wasn't looking where he was going and rear ended an elderly driver, whereas Fernando Alonso just loves his pit stops. He can't get enough of them. I still don't understand if that strategy by Aston Martin was a good one or not. Where he ran them. Because he, he was unlucky under the safety car, wasn't he, Alonso? And he yeah. didn't get the, the cheap stop. And he ended up on softs when he didn't want to be on softs. And so he did the stop and he went on to hards or mediums, other tyres. And actually he did way better than I expected him to. I mean, he was a machine, wasn't he? Uh, to that, I mean, after he's that still last really pit, good. He was amazing. He's still yeah. really good. He's another one. Like Verstappen, don't like him, but he's very mm. good. Alonso, he's a world-class dick, but yeah. he's very well, good. Well, it was great to watch, actually. I actually enjoyed that bit of the race. I was like, Ooh. I did as well. And especially the bit where he almost sidestepped it into the barriers. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. that was the save of the season by good, a country mile. Yeah. And he, what, what is, uh, watching the replay of that, because for those who didn't see it, he came out the final corner, got his right rear on the gravel and had uh, not just a snapper. I mean, he, it was a big old dollop of oversteer like properly flinging the wheel around yeah, yeah. to get straight but watching it back on the replay what was particularly impressive is literally i mean less than a quarter of a second after he gathered it back up again and when you or i would have just been like oh my god i nearly died he was already pressing the drs button to go faster yes he just I absolutely yeah, took yeah. it and he's, he's like gathered it yeah. straight away drs open onwards and he, he hardly lost any time at all mm. It's almost like he went, well, that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just how he kind of leads, leads his, lives his life. He just, you know, there's carnage going on. He just gathers it all up and just carries on full speed. You know, yes, meanwhile, there's, but... there's people from Honda raging at him, people from McLaren raging at him, people from Renault raging at him, people from law but, enforcement uh, raging at him. It does make me a bit sad because we talk about Max Verstappen's dom- utter dominance and, you know, how boring it is. You know, obviously Hamilton had years of dominance and everything. And really, for the quality of driver he is, he should have had a really boring... Like He should be like a 10-time world champion that won he's, everything. He's a good enough just, driver, but as we said and before, we talk, it's, I know it's we not enough. So many times. Yeah, yeah, it's not about being a driver. But well, it is well, just, I mean, it is moment. about being a driver, but <laughs> you've got to I be mean, everything. Primarily, yes. <laughs> There's an element of driving involved. <laughs> for instance, I could make all the best decisions, <laughs> but I don't think... <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be Formula yeah. 1 world champion. You could argue, I'm going to rule it you know, out. I'm sure yeah. there have been plenty of drivers who are like world class at being in the right place at the right time. And like everybody loves them. But I'm sure Nic- N- Nicholas Latifi was a lovely man. Uh, I still is. I don't think he's dead. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, you've got, to have, you've got to have the lot. But no, you're right. Alonso is so good and he's still so good. And I, you know, I. I tell you who isn't good, though. Go on. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, old. Well, yes. So, should we recount the story yeah. again for those that missed it? Because there, there, must, there must be some of our listeners that don't bother watching the races and just listen to us waffle on about it. I want to know who those. There are. was a yeah. safety car. There was a safety car, and somebody wasn't being very safe. <laughs> so, Lance Stroll. So, he well, it was a bit of a weird thing. Wasn't it? Basically, Ricardo. everyone was piling up, just but, quite literally, as it turned out. Everyone was slowing down before the safety car restart, as they tend to do waiting for the for Verstappen to, to hit go and everyone would then chase him. And coming into the final hairpin, there was a bit of a concertina, more of a concertina than perhaps there normally was. Several people had to brake quite sharply to avoid the driver in front of them. But Lance Stroll went basically piling into the back of Danny Ricciardo, lifted his back of his car up, smashed up his front end, and then after the race, blamed Daniel Ricciardo for it. <laughs> And there's a great bit of footage where Ricardo was in the the media pen 
and was told that Stroll had said this. And he said something along the lines of, I just calmed down, but now I'm really pissed off. <laughs> and he ended up saying, what did he say, Terry? <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> makes us fall in and love like, with Danny Ricardo watch... all over again. Let's keep him in F1. Because if you watch the replay, like, Stroll is not looking at Danny Ricardo. He's not, not looking where he's going. He's not looking where he's He's looking past the head. Again, if we go back to my driving instructor, Tim Mountain, who says, you know, always look at where you're going and not where you want to be or something. Kenny Precipice, what a time. guy. But, but basically, what Lance Stroll did was the equivalent of, like, texting your mate while you're driving yeah. or like fiddling with the radio that was it was he wasn't looking at the car in front right. and it's a safety car what if there was a marshal in that three inch gap between <laughs> ricardo and yeah. he was tailgating <laughs> not looking where he was going uh and then to, <laughs> to, and then to blame, blame for, ricardo and then for it and then you've got to feel for the aston martin press people because they have to double down on it because he's not getting told off by daddy stroll and so the whole team are having to do this kind of slight, and it's happened before this season where it's like they have to do this slightly perfunctory kind of like, oh no, yeah, yeah oh, it was, it was, it wasn't Lance's fault. Shh, mm, it's fine. Yeah. Shh. Oh, I've got to get a dead oh. hooker out of his room again. Oh. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> no, that that actually happened. That actually happened. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not Stroll's finest. I can, I I found myself trying to defend Stroll from time to time because I think he can be really good but he's nowhere near consistent enough and he does make these silly decisions. He's another one. Like I mean, he's nowhere near at the level of, of you know Piastri and Leclerc and Norris but he's shown flashes of being good and hasn't he had a podium before? He's had a couple of reasonable results. God, this is his eighth year in Formula 1. Oh is it I mean, really? He should be, he should be doing yeah. so much better than he actually is because somewhere in there there's a pretty decent driver. I did Years ago I did some driver training with a guy who also trains F1 drivers and he told me that he thought Lance Stroll was a really good driver but he just can't seem to access it regularly doesn't, doesn't need it enough yeah mm. maybe maybe it's like boxing where you've got to come from the streets to really want it maybe his dad should just write him out of his will and then say you've got to you got, you're poor now yeah. perform poor. and you can live you get in the will when you yeah, become exactly. world champion well that's the end of that also one, I'm firing you <laughs> from this <team. laughs> you've got to start so from scratch yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like I did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give you this Formula 4 car and nothing else. Yeah, that'd be great. Your bus fare home. Be a real rags to riches story, that one. I mean, it'd be a great reality TV. Riches to yeah, rags to riches. Exactly. It'd be a Spotify podcast series. Ooh. Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton had pole position taken away from him when the stewards realised their error. He nearly won the sprint, but actually was nowhere near. But Sunday was back to scintillating Lewis Hamilton form, complaining about tyres for two hours. <laughs> Oh, uh, this was both sides of Hamilton on this weekend, wasn't mm. it? So why did he lose his pole position? Right. So this was uh, this was in the sprint qualifying, not the main race. Shitting it down. He is very good in the wet, set a very good time, and thought he was going to win. Norris then set a better time, but he'd gone off the track towards the end of his lap before he started his good lap. Mm. And was therefore the steward said, right, your time's deleted because you can't. That 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 rule is generally there because if you go super wide at the previous corner, you get a better exit than if you'd stayed within the lines. Therefore, you get extra time on the next lap. But because it was shitting it down so much, they decided actually there's no way he got any kind of advantage there at all. So they reinstated his lap. It's like Abu Dhabi 21 all it's over. Very again. similar, yeah. So the the main it's steward raining. was. Let me just check. Michael Massey. No, that's not right. Um, it's called Racing Toto. <laughs> Who was that? Is he Birmingham? <laughs> <laughs> it's called Racing Toto. Oh, Toto. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Michael Massey. We're getting hung up on Michael Massey. Um, it was a similar kind of thing. Like it was, yeah, it was VAR. It was every kind of technological bullshittery in sport these days, wasn't it? But the race, this 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 Lewis Hamilton race was interesting because yeah, he put him on the hard time. He was just his tires were nowhere. He was moaning. He was at the back. He had a shit quality. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, well, let's let's backtrack a little bit because he he when he did really well in the sprint, actually got second a long time, but a long way behind Max. But let's discount that. He got second in a car that 
Mercedes didn't think was very good and Hamilton didn't think it was very good. But he said in his interview at the end of the sprint, I think I've learned a, r- a load about the car in that race. I've got some great ideas for setup for the Grand Prix. <laughs> and we thought, oh, wow, no, he's, he's like- found it. He's found the idea. This is all it took was this, this, the genius of, of, of Hamilton to to hustle it round in the sprint race and it's now he's found it and he's going to solve it and he put he put oh. in his big new setup and he went out in qualifying and he went out in q1 because it and was you terrible just know that all the mechanics when he comes in going i've got a setup and they're like oh fuck <laughs> it, no, not again <laughs> yes mate oh yeah. hang on lads yeah. i've got a great idea <laughs> <laughs> two two turns of wing on the front it's like you don't, you don't even know what that means do you lewis it's like no <laughs> But I want two turns of wing. <laughs> I've heard you say it. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he he put his great new setup on the car, and as it turned out, it was utter horseshit, and it made the car almost <laughs> undrivable. And uh, he went out in Q one and had a terrible car that he couldn't get the hang of in uh, in the race. But he did, in fairness, he did manage to uh, come through and get points, which I didn't think he was going to do. Mm. Well, it looked, it looked like he was going nowhere for ages, and then he eventually kind of finishes, what, ninth? Yeah, ninth. Yeah, ninth. Yeah, which is, which yeah. is only two places behind Russell, I think. Whereas Russell had a really boring race, where he was pretty much sixth or seventh the whole race. So it does... That that must be a bit gutting when you're Russell, because sort of, he's just like, oh, I'm going to beat my teammate. Oh, he's so shit. And it's like, oh, oh, he's he's right behind me. Well, we're oh. back to that point we've made a few times, haven't we? And, and fairness, lots of other people have made it as well, that Russell has got experience of setting up a shit car. Um, having spent yeah. so long at Williams, whereas Hamilton doesn't, and Hamilton does see the, the, well, the official Hamilton has now. Well, he has now yeah, but <laughs> but the, the, the the line for a couple of seasons now has been that Hamilton has been the one experimenting with all sorts of different setups, and part of me is now thinking, well, how much of it is he, he's, he's doing the mad, crazy experiments, and how much is it he just doesn't really know what he's doing because the whole team don't really know what they're doing because they don't know why the cars shit. Yeah, they can't figure out I, what's wrong with their car. And it's been like two seasons now, three seasons. Yeah, it's like they should ring me up for experimental so I'd be like, oh. Give it two turns of front wing. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, look, go. If you want, I'd say go to five. Mm. But, you know. But it goes all the way to 11. You'd only go to 11. Is that too though, much? Not like China. No, no, that's, that's the problem. Yeah. That's what they've been doing. Maybe they maybe have they basically just got a tiny stone henge. <laughs> and they also ran RB. Sonoda got taken out by Kevin Magnussen. Danny Rick got taken out by Lance Stroll. Unlucky. Yes. yes. <laughs> For all us normally slagging them off, yes, they were unlucky this race. Oh, 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 oh. That's the noise the house machines make. Automate. Oh. <laughs> Whatever it is they do. Hulk got another point in the race after ballsing up the sprint. Magnussen used Sonoda as target practice and got a penalty as a result. <laughs> what a... <laughs> was this? That, was, that was proper kind of like, not even... That was like, you know, you know when if you watch those like late night police chase programs, they're like, how does the police stop they the car they're chasing? The they, they, whack, yeah. Yeah, they, they whack the back tyre. That's what he did. Yeah. Fuck you know. Sonoda thought he was going to get a point, but the only point he got was from <laughs> Kevin Magnuson. What accent was that? Right in the ass. <laughs> that was the uh, Sheriff John <laughs> Bunnell. Salba. Salba became stars of the show because one of the drivers is Chinese and the crowd roared their approval as Zhou Guan Yu finished a magnificent 14th of 17 finishers. What a glorious day for Salba. Also, Valtteri Bottas' engine died. What a glorious day. I mean, we saw them this race, in fairness, because they were on screen True. every 10 seconds. We don't normally see them. So I guess from a Sauber kind of sponsorship investment point of view, that worked quite well. And the crowd really bloody great. like Joe, don't they? Oh, Jesus. They bloody love they him. They really love him. So, He's like Lewis Hamilton Mansell at Silverstone. Mania. Wasn't he the first, well, yeah, fine, they were saying the yeah. first Chinese F1 driver to race in China? Yeah. First Is Chinese he the first F1 one driver. Ever? F1. So it's the first. Yeah, it's the first to anything, and it is first kind of. Have a shit. It is kind of sad that this is what his third year in F one, and it's the f- and it's last and year. probably his last year, <laughs> and it's the only time that he's had a home Grand Prix. So yeah, I hope well, he enjoyed it. But, <laughs> I'm sure he cares. Alpine, Alpine really did their best, which unfortunately was utter shit. I have nothing to say. I don't even remember seeing them. Didn't Gasly have a problem with something? Probably. Williams. Logan Sargent started from the pit lane, which meant the pit crew didn't have to use their radios to tell him how much they hate him. And Albon had a stupid fucking helmet. No, Albon's helmet was really cool. 
I liked it. No. It was great. No. <laughs> Do not encourage me, cute panda helmets. It made me laugh every no. time I saw it. <laughs> I liked it, but I hated it. I'd like... I'd like it to be a, a rule that every driver has to have a comedy helmet for one race of the season. This, they can pick which this, race it is. <laughs> this one-off race helmet thing has gone too far. I want far. googly eyes. <laughs> Don't, because you know one of them. It was, I'd love it. It was great. Who was it ages ago? Look, it's like um, the reason. Fucking Valentino no, no, Rossi no, no. had a picture of his head on the top of his helmet when he was racing his bike, no, so it looked the like he was reason, just going, ah! The reason that we can't allow this is what if... Alex Albon was involved in a life-ending <laughs> crash, and the last footage is of them airlifting a fucking giant panda from the car. <laughs> Think about it. You make a good, it is point. a good point. The whole yeah, the whole Senna crash footage would be a lot less sombre. <laughs> <laughs> if, <laughs> big springy eyes coming out the top. Oh, it looked like Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> He's sponsored by Mister Brain Cell. This <laughs> Mister Brain Stem. Oh God. Oh. And now it's time for the state of F1 with Terry Saunders. A clip from the last state of F1 went viral on TikTok, I think. I haven't got a clue what counts as viral these days, but suffice to say, we got enough attention that there were several comments about fucking men with podcasts, and I feel the need to tell all of you Chinese espionage app freaks that I've been doing F1 podcasts since 2008. At this point, I'm like the David fucking Dimbleby of antagonistic reaction baiting F1 commentary. Anyway, Lance Stroll, what a <laughs> Now... This isn't my first stroll down Lance Stroll unappreciation lane, but this is his eighth year in Formula One, so it's time to evaluate his career while trying not to mention that his dad owns the team that he drives for. <laughs> Whoopsie, I did it. Look, we get it. You don't have to be here. You're bored. You could be off investing in crypto and murdering pole dancers <laughs> like all the other rich people, but instead you decided to try and get the one thing that eludes you, your father's pride. And mano y mano, Lance, come closer. You listening? You might want to sit down for this. He thinks you're a too. But don't worry, I have a solution. Look, you had a bad day at the office. And by office, I mean multi-million pound Formula One car. And by bad day, I mean you made me have sympathy for Daniel Ricciardo by driving yourself so far up into his business that he's now <laughs> shitting what you had for breakfast. You don't have any fans, your team thinks you're shit, Fernando Alonso is humouring you, and your dad hates you. The only reason you're still in Formula 1 is the same reason that I can't ask my work colleague what his name is after two years, because it would look more awkward to fire you now, so instead everyone, and I mean everyone, is waiting for you to see sense and quit, but you won't because you've never had to learn what failing and giving up is like. So Lance, take it from me, from someone who's given up multiple times in his life. Give up and fuck off, you fluffy-haired Johnny Green giant. Ho ho no, <laughs> green c- <laughs> wow, uh, I can't see the internet. Ah, I think with that, that one. one fly. Yeah, I'll probably get three hundred views like they normally do. <laughs> ah, that's it from us. We'll be back even before there's more racing with another of Phil Troman's race previews, and we'll be answering your questions in listeners' corner. Until then, it's goodbye to Phil Troman's. Goodbye, everyone. We haven't had time to talk about the 2025 Formula One calendar, which is out way earlier than it normally is, and it's basically oh, right. the same as this year. Well, that's because it starts next yeah. week, isn't it? <laughs> And to Terry Saunders. Uh, we haven't had time to talk about... It's getting quite weird that um, Toto Wolf is still trying to get Max Verstappen. It's just weird. It's a little bit obsessive. Odd. In the meantime, check out our mm-hmm. Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash for F1's sake, and follow us on Twitter at for F1's sake. Oh, and check out our YouTube channel where you can see us as well as hear us. If you're watching on YouTube already, here's something just for you. There you go. Yeah. Nope. However you want to watch or listen, just type in for F1 sake or something and see what comes up. Terry, where can people buy merch? Um, I'm a big fan of Argos. Terry, we've been through this. Argos nope. won't carry our stuff. I've said that before, haven't I? I don't know. Argos is like my go-to joke shop. Is there like a, is there a German Argos? Do you know, the catalogue shop doesn't exist here. It's not a thing. Oh, we should do a podcast on that. It's not a thing. Hmm. Anyway, go to ff1s.com forward slash shop. Thanks for listening, and I've been Ollie Pitt. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.